Greetings fellow descendants, my name is Lars, and today I want to talk to you about the new invasion mechanic present in Season 1 Invasion. So, there's a lot of up and down with this mechanic currently, and I know that a lot of people dislike it or just aren't fond of it, whether or not they feel it's too difficult or it's just not very interesting or boring. I myself am not a huge fan of it either, but... Right now, it is still a good source of gold every day and a and the pathway to unlocking Haley. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to stick through it. But for those who are less interested in it and want to wait, they did say that Saturday should be I should be probably today when this video is uploaded that the Haley drop rates are going to increase. And then the following Thursday of next week is when they're going to fix some of the invasion issues. Not, I wouldn't say issues, but like take away some of the things that feel bad and sort of like fix some of the other aspects of it. So a little more quality of life, as well as making certain aspects of it a little easier overall, uh, which I don't necessarily mind. Until then, and even... At that point, what I'm going to talk to you about today should still bear weight. You know, it's still going to be useful information, even though it'll be a little bit easier at that point. But I want to go ahead and talk about the invasion mechanic, the different invasion missions, and how you can and how you can manage them in order to help get you a better score and get you more Haley pieces and gold and whatnot, uh, and, and, and get you all these things that you want in a little bit of an easier way. So, first, let's talk about the inversion reinforcement. Once you have progressed your quest enough, quest line enough through the story to unlock the invasion uh, stuff, you're going to get the inversion reinforcement, which is this whole screen. So these are a bunch of buffs, which are also going to be updated. They said to remove some like some of the negative aspects of it, like this one says, max HP plus four point seven percent and defense minus zero point nine percent. They're probably going to remove the negatives and just leave the positives on there. I don't really understand why they're adding a bunch of negatives to this stuff anyway. But these are all little buffs and stuff that you can get to help you in your invasion runs. Uh, stuff like Identify Energy Source during the Order of Truth invasion grants Identify Energy Source, which causes an additional hit when hitting the lesions attached to arc containers with a firearm. This is good for when you're doing the invasion missions that have the towers. It's going to make them easier. Likewise, the Force Device Connection, stepping on an arc tile during the Legion of Darkness invasion, grants Force Device Connection. That's another one where you have to step on, step on tiles and hold the position in order to progress them. We'll get to that in a minute when we go over each of the missions. But aspects like this help to improve your runs. Once you've selected your bonuses that you want to unlock with your inversion level uh, energy that you've acquired you can go ahead and then slot them by clicking them again and you can slot them into your activation down here you can only slot one per sort of like color so I can't slot another purple one but I can go ahead and slot the force device connection here and now I have these three active for me the recovery one survival two and season two are now all active for my next mission that I choose to do. I don't currently have a mission to, to be able to do for today because you can only do four a day and I've already done mine for today, but I wanted to show you what these look like for now. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the invasion screen. You can access your invasions once every, uh, you can access your invasions every day. You can do four missions a day from this terminal, the Infiltration Operations Terminal. You go ahead and go to your Infiltration Operations Hard, and you're gonna go ahead and see the map, and it's gonna have areas that are red with like lines through them indicating these are danger zones. This is where the invasions are occurring. Additionally, the symbols over the dungeons are going to be changed to match the invasion logo. That way you have, you know exactly which dungeon you are going to be doing. Once you engage, once you click on that, you have the option to do the dungeon normally or to do the disrupt the invasion. Once you enter into disrupt the invasion, you're going to be presented with the 
um, the order or legion that you're going to be up against. Each one, each faction has their own specific um, mechanics that you're going to have to work through, their own missions that you're going to have to work through, and we're going to go ahead and get into those now. Okay, so when it comes to the different mission types, you're going to be dealing with the three different factions of the game. Up first, we have the Order of Truth. They are going to be dealing with the Towers missions, Towers and Drones. So when you get into these missions, you're going to go ahead and see these towers with these growths on them. You're going to have to shoot off the growths to expose the symbols beneath them. Currently, there's like six towers with two of them that are empty and four of them and four of them that have the symbols on them. Uh, as of Thursday of next week, when they do the update, they're going to remove those blank towers and it's just going to be the ones that have the symbols on them. Uh, but what you're going to be looking for is you're going to be looking from the top down. The top uh, slot is going to be the first position with the bottom slot being the fourth position for the symbols. So when you're looking to what you're, you're going to be looking for the symbols on the tower to match them to the drone that's in the area. There's going to be like three drones rotating around with different symbols on the top of them. And each symbol is going to be marked with like a one, two, three, or four dot above them to show you whether they're in the first position or the fourth position. Currently, it's like that as of next week when they update it on Thursday, it's going to be vertical over the drone so that it matches with the tower's position. But right now we have to deal with the dots and it being horizontal. So you just have to look for the dot to make sure it's the one through the one or the four position that you're looking at. And you just have to try and match the symbols. So just remember the symbols go the first position is at the top, the fourth position is at the bottom. That's how you're gonna read it to match it with the drones. Once you've found the matching drone, you're going to stand in it and activate it or stand in it if the timer has expired at the top of the um, screen there. What's going to happen is the towers are going to explode, the drone will protect you if you've got the right one, and then it will drop a weapon. You're going to take that weapon and you're going to shoot the eyeballs of the door here. The weapon has six shots and each eyeball requires three shots to destroy it. So you're going to have to do this whole process two times per area here. And each of these missions has two of these sections in it. So you're going to have to essentially do this four times to clear the eyeball walls. Um, just my, my big recommendation for this is look to try to expose at the very least two of the symbols and then try and match those to a drone. Um, if you can get two, you have a good chance of getting the right drone may not always be correct there might be a drone there might be two drones that have those matching symbols but if you really want to be safe look for three symbols you should be safe with three symbols there shouldn't be two drones with three exact matching symbols and one random symbol so just kind of play that safe if you want to and just try and find at least three or two if you feel like two would, would be enough for you to figure it out then go ahead and break the eyeball, get the gun, break the eyeballs, and move your way through. Once you get to past the second setup of these, you're going to enter the boss area. The boss is going to um, have a shield on him that you're going to need to break with the gun that drops from these drones. So you're going to need to do this one more time for the boss, at the very least. And once you've acquired the weapon, you can shoot the boss with the gun until it depletes his shield. Once it does, the gun will disappear from your hands and you can just start shooting the boss. Each of these bosses for all these missions has a yellow bar that's gonna roll underneath their health bar. This indicates the time before they put their barrier back up. In this case, it'll be a shield that you need to get that gun for again. In other cases, it'll be just another mechanic. So you just need to make sure you beat the boss in this phase or you're gonna have to do it again. Or you're gonna have to go and get the gun again to shoot off his shield a second time. Okay, so next up we have the Legion of Darkness, and these missions are going to have colored pads as the primary mission objective. So what's going to happen is you're going to enter into the mission area, you're going to see a floating platform. It'll direct you up to the floating platform. Once you're standing on the floating platform, you are able to see all of the colored pads on the floor, what colors they are, and you can see the door as well. Uh, so the door is going to have 
three symbols on it. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go stand on the appropriate colored pads in order to light them up. If you Once you stand on them, sit on them for a little bit of time and they'll light up. Once they're lit up, you can move on to the next one. Once all three are lit up, the enemies will despawn and the door will open. You can progress through. This is relatively straightforward, but there are some hindrances. There are going to be enemies that are going to spawn that have the uh, red exclamation marks above their heads. Uh, you have to shoot these down quickly. There's going to be normal enemies that will just kind of wander around, and if they stand on your pad for too long, they're going to like remove its symbol and move it around. And if it's the uh, exploding bomb guys, they will instantly jump on the pad and blow it up. So you have to try and take these things out quickly. As of Thursday next week, uh, I think they're removing most of those. And they're going to be implementing colorblind options for the symbols uh, and, the, and the colored pads. So that you have symbols to match as well. So if you're colorblind, you are not necessarily hindered by this anymore. Currently, it's very color oriented, so it does it does uh, not do well for colorblind players, but they are going to fix it next week, um, and they're going to remove the the exploding guys that will remove your thing to make the pads a little bit easier. So you just go ahead and again, like the previous one, you're going to do two zones of this, then you're going to get to a boss. The boss is going to be covered in a colored shield, a bubble. You just have to go and stand on the pad that matches the color of the bubble, and then you're just going to shoot the boss to remove that bubble. And then, as you see again, there's a yellow bar underneath the boss's health bar. The second that depletes, he's going to put the bubble back on, and you're going to have to do it again. So, this one's not as bad. Breaking the bubble doesn't take as long, and even if he gets it back, clearing it out again isn't as bad as... Finding all the towers, finding the right drone, picking up the gun and shooting the shield off three times like the previous one. So, if he gets his shield back, if you don't kill him in the first cycle, it's not the end of the world. This one's actually not that bad. You can still maintain gold even if he brings his shield back up once. So, don't worry about that too much. And uh, that's kind of it for these. These are pretty straightforward, pretty simple ones. Uh, the towers and drones are... A little bit more complex and a little bit require a little bit more um, focus but these kind of just uh, find the right colors for the door match them make sure they're lit up and move through them and then the last mission type is from the Legion of Immortality and this is the <clears throat> and for this mission type you're going to run into an area and they're going to spawn a machine that is used for depositing um, brain materials that they're that the enemies are gonna drop so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to clear out the enemies as they come and they're gonna pick up uh, about 15 max of these brain samples you want to pick up 15 initially because once you deposit for the first time there's gonna be a timer you have a one minute once this timer starts after your first deposit where this thing is going to clear all of its contents so if you don't complete this within that minute time frame, you're going to have to redo it. You're, it's going to basically reset you to zero and start you over. So the best way to do this is to... The timer will not start until you've made your first deposit. So just gather 15 to start with, deposit. Then gather 15 more, deposit. Gather 15 more, deposit, and you should be good. You can, you can defeat as many enemies as you like before you make your first deposit and get a bunch extra on the floor to go pick up to make it speedier. So if you feel like you're not necessarily doing as much damage or you're having a tough time with this section, um, clear out more enemies up front, and then that way you have a lot to pick up on the ground. Just watch out for any enemies with the exclamation marks because they can either drain the samples from you or they can mess up uh, your deposit thing, I think, if they hit it. Um, so just be wary of that and try and uh, avoid that. As with the previous missions, you're going to deal with two zones of this and then a boss. Uh, after each zone, you're going to have a door that's got like these um, destroyable segments on them. They're marked with A, B, C, and D. You're just going to shoot those down and break them. And this is a key to the boss's mechanic. Once you get to the boss room, you're going to again collect the brains and deposit as usual. But then once you finish it, once it's once it's filled up, the boss is tethered 
to something. You have to go to the end of the tether, and there's going to be those little things to shoot, just like you did for the door. You're going to shoot those off, and once they're all broken, the boss's tether will break, and you can attack the boss. As with the previous ones, if you do not clear the boss before that yellow bar goes to the bottom, you're going to have to do this over again. And for this one in the towers, if you have to do it twice, you may not be able to get your gold completion or your silver completion, depending on how much time you've done up to that point, you know? So, uh, try to bring in a substantially powerful build for dealing with, like, boss monsters. These bosses do have decently high HP, so you're going to want to be able to be pushing them as much as you can. Um, one quick note about all of these missions is that you can reset them. You do not get marked as completed on them until you've actually completed the mission. It will You can only do four a day, but they won't be marked as done until you've completed them in full. So if you just go in and start it and it's not looking too good, you can always go to your options menu, return to Albion, try again. I did it a bunch of times for one mission because I kept getting really bad starts because I wasn't properly utilizing the brain depositing uh, on one map and the terrain was kind of messing with me. So I kept resetting to try to get a better shot at it. So if you are struggling and you're trying to get like... Maybe you're trying to push to the silver tier, maybe you're trying to get that gold, right? And you're just off by a hair, you're trying to clean it up. Especially as you're learning the mechanic, you can always reset and try again. And uh, until they decide that they don't want you doing that, I don't know if that's something that they want. But you know what? It's the way it is now. You just use it as needed until you're comfortable enough to not need it anymore. Um, but it's nice in case you make a little mistake. Or something just goes awry, like you get knocked off an e the edge and you lose a bunch of time. Alright, so, yeah, invasions are a little funky. There's a lot going on, the timer's a little messed up, and overall it's not super fun. But they are working to improve it, make it a little bit easier, and they are going to be adding multiplayer options for it later, so you don't have to do it solo for forever, just for now. But it is important that you probably do it occasionally, even if you just run to get it completed. For that extra gold, you know, a million a million gold per run, that's four million gold a day that you just have available to you if you want it. Um, that's my main reason for running, is just getting the extra gold. You know, any, any Haley pieces I'm getting are a bonus. I'm not uh, in a rush right now, though, because I'm waiting for those buffs that are coming Saturday, which is probably today as of this video's uh, release. And uh, we'll go ahead and see how Haley is, uh, how quick I can get Haley from that point. Um, I'll release more information regarding Haley at a later point. As you saw in the video, I did all of these runs with Blair. You don't need to run characters like Bunny or Valby or anything. You can play anybody you want as long as you've got decent gun set up. And with Blair's new changes, I found some really fun builds to run with him. Uh, so I'm going to be showcasing those at a later date. I just need to finish uh, catalyzing him and setting things up. So if you're interested in that, please uh, go ahead and uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more TFD content. I'll be producing more here over the course of the next month as we le as we lead into the next uh, part of the season on October 10th. And uh, if you have any comments or questions regarding anything, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them when I have a chance. But uh, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.